It's the most wonderful time of the year, and no, I am not talking about Christmas. Hey everyone, welcome to another installment, another movie review here at A Week in Geekdom. My name is Giovanni Menendez, and finally, Jesus Christ, it's been too long. I have been waiting since this announcement was made. Holy crap, finally, I was able to see the Aquaman movie. And I gotta say, man, right off the bat, I am not one to give grades or say this is a percentage rating. Because I don't really believe in that sort of stuff. If you want to see a movie, go watch it. If you don't like it, well, you didn't like it. Move on. That's it. But th this whole system of having to do percentages and reviews uh, with uh, numericals and all that stuff, not for me. I'll just tell you what I liked, what I didn't like, if I recommend it or not. That's it. Just some friendly thoughts. I won't spoil anything. Don't worry about it. Just in case you want to see the movie and then you want to come back. That's perfectly fine with me. I'm just going to geek out over quite possibly one of my favorite movies of 2018. Yeah, I went there. And I know, I know, I'm probably getting some viewers that are like, what is this guy even talking about? That movie was horrible. That's your opinion. That's cool, bro. Here's mine. I absolutely love this movie. I, uh, yeah, I'm going to be a little bit biased. A lot of people that know me, whether it's in person or through the internet or this channel or other social media sites, you know that I am a big fan of uh, Arthur Curry. I love the character. I've been reading about Aquaman since the 90s. I've enjoyed every single animated adaptation, whether it be on the Superman the Animated Series show, whether it be uh, Batman Brave and the Bold or uh, the Justice League series, or, uh, hell, even the Throne of Atlantis uh, comic book uh, movie, animated movie adaptation, I should say. The character has always been uh, something that I have enjoyed and look forward to when, it, when I go into uh, DC Comics or DC Comic adaptations. Now, in 2016, imagine my surprise when the character was revealed to be a part of the... Uh, uh, back then, people were referring to it as the Extended Universe, but uh, it's more of a... What was the name? Uh, Worlds of DC. Uh, the film universe, if you will. I just like to call them DC films. That's it. So imagine my surprise when the character got a cameo in BVS. That was freaking amazing. That was one of my highlights in the video that I made of that movie. And then to my surprise that he was going to be a part of the Justice League movie. And... Surprise, surprise, he was one of my favorite parts of that movie as well. Now, the character of Aquaman after so many decades. This is a character that has been neglected by everybody. Every mainstream outlet media, every professional reviewer, every uh, mainstream fan, every casual fan, whatever. He has been ignored, he has been ridiculed in-universe and out of you know, in, in reality, he has been the subject of jokes, of parodies, the character has gone through the ringer. All thanks to that famous Super Friends cartoon, but if you actually go back and read the comic books, yeah, they tend to be a little bit silly at times, but for the most part, a good chunk of the material that has been published is quite freaking excellent and pretty dark. You had storylines like Search for Mira, Death of a Prince, stuff like that, where it's not all fun and games and the character has life and death equations to deal with, you know? It's stuff like that that has always uh, appealed to me. And of course, the whole mythology with Peter David's run. Uh, whatever, I, I'm rambling about the comic book. We're here to talk about the uh, movie. But yeah, this is a character that has been ridiculed they did a, a complete 180, by the way, with Peter David in the 90s. They redesigned him again with the Timverse in the animated series. Nobody batted an eye. He was one of the first superheroes to get married. He was one of the su first superheroes to have a kid and lose a kid, lose a marriage, lose a hand, get redesigned, 
now uh, had a hard reboot with the new 52, it has had multiple origins, nobody batted an eye, like I just mentioned. Of course, you had an actor of Polynesian descent with Jason Momoa, and now people want to complain about, that's not my Aquaman. Well, sorry to disappoint you guys, but technically none of the actors are your favorite superheroes because they're adapting the characters. But that is a subject for another video. I am ranting, and, and I hate to rant. I am so sorry, but I needed to get that out. Uh, so yeah, the movie is an amalgam of storylines and plots that I have seen throughout the comic books, uh, throughout the history of the character that I thought was pretty well. Uh, that I thought was pretty well juggled. One of the uh, main aspects of this movie is taking uh, a, a direct adaptation of the New 52 stuff that Jeff Johns did back in 2011. That, I think, embodies about 75% of uh, the material used for this movie. You have the character of Arthur who is a loner, who doesn't really know where he belongs. He is a freak by human standards, and he is a freak by Atlantean standards. He's somewhere in the middle with no real direction. And I thought uh, Jason Momoa played this pretty well. I genuinely enjoyed th this hero without a course. And basically, the journey that he goes through is that ship setting sail and setting straight for the eventual hero that he becomes. It is a journey that is worthwhile taking because you see the formation of this legendary, iconic DC character. Now, Jason does a really good job, but it, it, it was interesting to see all the voices that I kept hearing when uh, the character was speaking. I did see some John's material with the New 52. I did see a lot of Peter David's influence, a lot of Golden Age uh, cheesiness, a lot of elements to con that converged in a film that is audacious, wild, crazy, and not afraid to do its own thing, and I gotta commend it for that. James Wan took a gamble and, in my opinion, paid off. If you are a fan of this character, you know that the character has a history of just wild and crazy elements, whether it be this high-tech uh, civilization that people thought was extinct and now is living underwater. You explore the mythology, you get to see the beauty of Atlantis and, and the richness of, of such a city that is a technological uh, wonderland, if you will, but also is alive and breathing and, and it coexists with its citizens. Of course, you also see the whole thing with Ocean Master and all these other characters. But I think uh, James was able to take the best elements of a character that really hasn't been explored all that well and form a cohesive plot that one, uh, gives us a clear um, hero journey element, and two, establishes as a dominant force. And if you're brand new to the character, you're like, yeah, all right, he is a member of the Justice League. He is one of the heavy hitters, because he truly is. He is basically an underwater Superman, if you will, and he has uh, the uh, royal duty of protecting 75% of planet Earth. One of the aspects that I really, really enjoyed was the, or were the visuals, I should say, the visuals on these were crisp and detailed and absolutely lovely. I loved, and I'm saying lovely a lot, uh, watching uh, all the uh, uh, scenes in Atlantis and the different scenes on Earth, uh, you know, on land, I should say, whether it was Sicily or uh, the Trench or Atlantis itself or Amnesty Bay in the uh, eastern coast of the United States. All that stuff just looked beautiful and it, it gave you a sense of how vast and rich the oceans are in this world where it can look totally different depending on the uh, place that you're in. And I thought that was really cool. Now, one of the aspects I did not like was the fact that a lot of the earlier scenes at the beginning of the movie, the early uh, computer graphics and all that stuff, weren't as sharp, as clean as I would have liked them to be, and it, it all just looked very uh, green screen-ish, especially with Thomas Curry and, he, and uh, his scenes in the past and all that stuff. 
but it's only nitpicking. It looked great, but you could tell in certain scenes that, you know, it was a green screen. Plus the character, uh, the whole movie uh, takes place in different timelines and the, they decided to de-age certain characters in certain scenes. For example, Thomas Curry, he at the beginning, uh, uh, Tamora Morrison, you know that he is not a young actor and yet they de-aged him where it was a little bit cringy. I don't know if it was a real wig or a digital wig or something, but it looked funky and I was a little bit like, uh, okay. Uh, same with uh, Willem Dafoe, which was a little bit too weird seeing him uh, all young and, and, and doing his thing as a uh, young Volko. Uh, but other than that, uh, the movie is fine. I have seen so many people taking jabs at this simply because it's not an uh, X or Y film that I will not name. You know, it's that kind of mentality that I try to stay away from and I, I just... I just like what I like and I am giving you my honest opinion. I don't try to go into the whole um, war about which films are better and why this one sucks because it's done by these guys. That ain't me. Every film, I, I enjoy most films that I watch and regardless of the competition or all that stuff, it don't matter. At the end of the day, these are just pieces of art meant to entertain and hopefully inspire people. Because there is a message to this movie. I really enjoyed basically the uh, uh, conservation effort to clean our oceans because they are dirty like you have no idea. We are horrible as a human species uh, taking care of uh, our planet and just, you know, we've done a horrendous job. The sea is just filled with so much plastic injuring sea life and contaminating our waters and all that stuff. It, it you know, I loved that aspect of the film that in, in a subtle, small way, that it probably helped spark uh, some imagination on viewers to uh, try and do something, I guess, to help uh, clean our uh, oceans. And the other aspect that I really enjoyed plot-wise, or the message of the plot, it was uh, words, not conflict you know words not fighting words can solve issues instead of just tackling them with violence i would rather talk things out and not have to rely on fists or weapons or just combat or just fighting because you know at the end of the day uh this is all we've got and we uh, i hate to see people not getting along and i want people to uh, be a little bit closer to each other. So uh, I really appreciated the message, especially especially coming from a character that has been so uh, marginalized in the past and has been ridiculed that I thought, you know, it was pretty, uh, it was pretty nice to see that on screen. But uh, regardless of all of that, I thought um, James Wan did an amazing job, like I said, with the cinematography, and I loved, I absolutely loved the fight choreography and the stunt work used in this movie, whether it be a scene with uh, Atlanta fighting Atlantean soldiers on the lighthouse, where there is a, a frenetic um, 3D fight effect going around and all that stuff or you see uh, Merc with his elite soldiers chasing down Mira and Arthur through Sicily, or uh, underwater sea battles. Those are freaking amazing to behold it's because, you know, there is no uh, a gravity or, or, well, yeah, there is gravity, but you know what I mean. There's no, there's no central point of a character just standing there because anything or everything can be an angle. And I thought it looked amazing. You didn't get lost like other fights tend to do, or other scenes tend to do, I should say. I should say. You had a clear, focused scene as to what these guys were doing, especially at the end with our main villain and our main hero uh, duking it out. It just looked amazing, and I loved every single uh, bit of it. Of it. Uh, I have to admit, I've, I got a super teary-eyed watching this movie because I, you know, I've been following this character for so long to see certain aspects, whether it be Amnesty Bay, whether it be uh, Salty the Sea Dog, whether it be Aquaman doing his uh, telepathic communication with the animals, or the fish, I should say. 
uh, whether it's uh, just seeing Mira and Arthur together on stream, this uh, awesome power couple that I have been a fan of, it just hit the geek spot hard, man. I absolutely loved it. Patrick Wilson, uh, by the way, did a phenomenal job as Ocean Master Orm. He was frightening and convincing, and, and there was an air of conviction to him. Like, this was a worthy cause. And to some extent, yes, Atlantis is a city that is full of fanatics. But at the end of the day, he kind of did make a point. He did make a valid point as to why he wanted to invade Earth and teach the, uh, or, or the surface, to teach the surface dwellers uh, a thing or two about what they have been doing and the threat that they feel is imminent from uh, the people of every nation, every country. Because even though they don't know Atlantis exists, you know, they're running out of space, whether it be by uh, contamination or uh, submarines or explosions or whatever the cause may be, they're running out of space and, you know, a cornered animal will strike back. So I really appreciate it and I really loved Patrick Wilson's um, just on-screen bravado as one of the uh, coolest uh, comic book villains, in my opinion. And speaking of cool comic book uh, villains, uh, Yahya Abdul-Mateen II. Holy crap. The dude just killed it as one of my favorite DC villains of all time. Black Manta was everything I could have wanted from his origin story. You know, it was reworked a little bit, but, you know, the essence of it was there and the origin uh, with his dad and all that stuff. But, man, he just killed it on that role. You could really see the ferocity of this character that had something tragic happen to him. And he blames the character of Aquaman for, uh, for this event, for this uh, tragedy. And, you know, he, he, he was... Black Manta from the beginning all the way up to the end of the film. Every scene that he was on, I paid close attention to and just seeing his arch nemesis basically. You know, aside from Ocean Master, the two main villains that everybody always mentions when it comes to Aquaman, you got Ocean Master and you've got, of course, Black Manta. And seeing these two characters fighting for the very first time in like cinematic history, that was pretty special and then brought a tear to my eye, especially. Uh, when you do see the suit and the way uh, everything is meticulously constructed and the science behind the laser eyes and all that stuff. Uh, James did a fantastic job of detailing everything in a way where it made sense and it was natural and organic. Like I mentioned, uh, the film looks beautiful. The sound is something I wanted to mention as well. Uh, Rupert, who did the soundtrack for Wonder Woman, he did a phenomenal job as well. I love it. I l completely loved this soundtrack and the heavy use of uh, bass guitar and low uh, riffs and all that stuff to signal, you know, the depths. And of course, uh, Aquaman himself uh, did read interviews where Jason said that he based his character or his attitude or persona on heavy metal music like uh, Metallica and stuff like that. So it makes sense to use that uh, bass motif where you have characters like uh, Wonder Woman, which is more uh, uh, heavy, electric, and Superman is more pia uh, piano, uh, subdued music. You've got Batman with high orchestra, and this character, you know, the bass guitar. I thought that was a pretty uh, clever little twist. The music, a lot of people were uh, basically bitching and moaning online. I get it. You're not a fan of this Pitbull Toto remix or whatever. But it's a tongue-in-cheek joke because the characters need to go to the Sahara. They need to go to Africa, ocean to ocean, all that stuff. It was a fun little joke. And I think the joke flew over everybody's heads. I don't know. The music was awesome. The cast was electric. I loved, um, there's just so much I could talk about. Nicole Kidman was excellent as Atlanta. Uh, Amber was fierce, loyal, just a pure badass and a beautiful uh, person uh, to see as Mira. Mira is one of my favorite uh, comic book ladies of all time and she, pr uh, yeah, she played the part perfectly. She held her own and she did her thing and, uh, you know, just 
just an all-around badass, and I want to see more characters like that in future comic book movies and, and future movies as well. Uh, I also really enjoyed Willem Dafoe's take on Volko. It was a little bit different from the source material. Uh, I was expecting, you know, a little bit more of a rounder persona, but still, it looked pretty awesome, and I love the scenes of him training a uh, young Arthur. Which, by the way, uh, that's probably one of my second negatives of this movie. The child actors that they used, uh, a, a young, uh, I'm going to say nine-year-old uh, Arthur, and then a, a 15-year-old or 16-year-old, uh, I wasn't too much of a fan of. Those scenes made me cringe a little bit. But everything else, you know, was pretty fun. This movie, I, I like to make jokes about comparing movies and, and in my head how I see them. And I guess for this movie... If I were to take certain aspects of Gladiator and mix them with Indiana Jones inside of a comic book uh, DC movie, that's sort of what you would get with Aquaman. I love the idea of the hero's journey of redemption and just finding the way uh, to restore his uh, faith and balance and, and status on the world because he is a superhero. He is a character that people look up to and uh, to lose that faith and not see himself as the hero that he's always meant to be. Uh, I, I really enjoyed uh, seeing the journey of him discovering that aspect and, and you know, becoming a, a great character, a great uh, hero. So overall, I'm not gonna rate this. I'm not going to give it a grade or a number or anything. I'm just gonna say that if you wanna have a fun time, Please support this movie, please watch it. If you're a fan of Aquaman, this is a must watch and you're probably really excited about the idea of a character that has been so, um, such a heavy underdog, man, to finally get his due in a movie that is brimming with personality, gusto and flair that I absolutely loved. Guys, for me, personally, the hype was real, this movie was real, everything about this was just freaking fantastic. Don't let the haters bring you down. Don't listen to that noise. Go watch the movie and enjoy it, because it is fun. It is a fun movie, and it does stick to the formula of fun movies. It It's wild, it's ambitious, and it has fun doing its thing. It can be crazy and downright hilarious, but at the same time, it honors the source material. Seeing Arthur Curry with the hero suit, with the Aquaman suit, it definitely brought a tear to my eye, and it, it was literally reading a comic book, reading comic books, which I love for this character. Seeing that for the very first time on screen, uh, you know, it, it was just a magical experience, and I gotta thank James Wan for doing this, and I gotta thank Zack Snyder for bringing Jason Momoa into the DC Films uh, universe and, and introducing Aquaman and Batman vs. Superman, which led to all of this. So I am extremely happy. I, oh man, I, 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 I don't know. I, uh, what do you guys think? Have you seen the movie yet? I know I did see it a little bit earlier uh, compared to other people, but regardless, I know uh, a lot of people are, are watching it and I want to know your opinion on it and what you thought of this uh, review slash admiration for the character. Um, did I miss anything? Probably. I don't know. I really enjoyed this. Hopefully, uh, you uh, enjoyed this review and you took something different out of it compared to other people just uh, bashing or, or just uh, being trolls on the internet. I don't know. That's not my type of mentality. I'm here to have fun and entertain you guys in whatever way possible. So yeah, that's it for me. Thank you guys once again for liking, commenting, and subscribing to a Weekend Geek Them. And thank you for sharing this content. Uh, hit the notification bell so you know when new videos pop up. Follow me on your favorite social media platform. And uh, that's it. That, that's that's about it. I have got to go. Yeah, I gotta go. I will catch all of you on our next episode. I wish you guys the very best. God bless. And we'll see each other next time. Thank you.